What's that? Why are you gonna eat that microphone? Don't do that. Look at that thing. What's that over there? What's that over there? Up here. <laughs> so now that we got that done for now, um, and I say for now because I was reading more comments, you guys have recommended some uh, cooler stuff, so I had to I had to buy some. So I got some new RGBs coming, addressable individual addressable RGBs, and an Arduino, and an LCD screen, and some fluid temperature sensor. So we're gonna we're gonna take this to the next level. Hopefully, clean it up, make it look more professional, like a lot of you said, and just see how far we can take it. But for now, we're gonna do we're just gonna take. Uh, we're gonna take a nice little relaxing day because, well, it's gonna take a long time for that to get here. So what we're gonna do is some reverse engineering. Yes. Now, if you missed it, there was a video where I took basically one of these guys that I have an extra. So this is a A12 X25 PWM, and this is also an A12 X25 PWM. Obviously, the fan is missing, and that's because this is gonna be our new fan test bench, and that is what we're gonna do today. We're going to try to literally copy this fan design, print it out, put it on this fan, and then see what the difference is in uh, a printed version versus the actual version. Now, the one I create is going to be as close as I possibly can get it to the actual geometry of this fan. It's not gonna be perfect because it's a printer and not um, a manufacturing facility, but we're gonna do our best. And the idea here is to try to understand how much performance we're actually losing just by printing alone. And then when we move to just printing goofy fan designs like a, a one blade fan or maybe like a, a giant stack of fans off one hub who knows what we we're going to come up with we're going to know um basically we'll see the performance hit that they get based on just being a goofy fan design and then we'll also know you know just how much we're losing anyway uh, just because we're printing a fan blade or maybe we'll do better and then and then that would be embarrassing for noctua but i doubt that's going to happen so step one measure this fan and try to model it as best we can. So obviously it's easy enough to measure the hub of this fan to figure out how big the hub of the Noctua is. Like we can measure the hub of the fan, the core, and then we can measure the outside diameter and give us a wall thickness. That's easy. The hardest part is gonna be trying to, trying to do the blades. So the first problem we got is what is the radius of that curve? I can see that the blades come out as a, they're basically forward swept, it looks like that but they also have a radii to them and I don't know what that measurement is. And there's really no good way to do it with a set of digital calibers. So what I'm gonna do is kind of like, um, if you guys are familiar with feeler gauges to see the thickness or basically set a gap between something. I'm gonna try to do that. I'm going to print out some um, templates at different diameters or different radiuses and we're going to just match them up until we find one that fits that curve and then we'll know what that radius is so let's do that first that should take a few seconds to print i mean they're, they're going to be really small to fit in there that took a bit more a bit more printing than i had uh, originally planned but i think i got something close so what i landed on was where did it go Right here, this one, I think it's this one. Okay, so 45 degrees looks like a good choice. Maybe not perfect, but it's only gonna be so good because my printer's only so good. And then the next thing we need to worry about is the angle at which the blade leaves the hub. So this little piece that's on the screen also has a 35 or 33.5 degree sweep angle. So if you imagine here, this is the hub. This is where the blades leave. So this is that 45 degree radius that the blades are appearing to be and this is the angle that the hub and the blade would make so if we slide this little piece in here it seems to made up reasonably and it's uh obviously again not perfect but my printer is not perfect but i think this is close enough to move forward so now we got the initial angle of 33.5 and the blade curve angle of 45 let's just double check that I believe it's 45. Oh, actually it's 47. Okay, so we're, we're going with 47. 33.5, so there's the angle the blade leaves. There's the radius, or not the, the yeah, there's the radius of the blade. We have nine blades to deal with, and I believe they have a thickness of around two and a half millimeters. It's kind of tough to get in there. Should have saved a piece from that one I broke, but yeah, looking like two and a half millimeters. 
Well, we'll go if we can measure. Two and a half at the leading edge, 2.2 at the trailing edge, nine blades, hub diameter of 5185 is what I have. I think that's as close as we're gonna get. And we're gonna leave the hole in the middle because it's gonna be easier to push on and off this hub without breaking anything. So now we need to set out to try to design that. So that's that's what we'll do now. So welcome back, it's been a, it's been a minute. I'm not sure how much of that I cut out, but I was uh, doing a little fooling around here trying to get everything to line up perfectly. As you can see, I got a lot of construction lines, things and planes, it, it had been pretty boring. But I think we got a design that's similar to this one. I mean, it's not gonna be perfect unless Noctua sends me a drawing and I don't think they're gonna do that. But we're gonna get as close as we can get. So we're just trying to do, we're trying to hit all of our measurements. Um, now, like we talked about this thing earlier, trying to set the, the hub angle and the pitch. So if we look at that now, what I did is I kind of drew it in there, if I could find it. Which sketch are you? So here we go. There's the, the same angle. So it was um, basically, it was measured differently. It was 33 and a half, but it's the same measurement, but now we're measuring between these two legs here. So we still got the 47, which is set in our radius of our blade uh, leading edge. And then we got the hub relation of 50.32. Uh, just same measurements as before to keep everything similar. Um, cord length of 61, and then we're going to cut the outside, so I'll show how I did that. But that basically sets our blade, and it looks similar to how we perceive this fan. We have a shallower angle of attack on the tips here, a little wider, um, narrower at the bottom with a, you know, a more aggressive angle of attack. Still doesn't look exactly like a Noctua fan because we need to clean it up a little bit, but that's what we'll do now. That eh, looks halfway decent. So now we need to just do a little bit of a circular pattern here. So the Noctua fan has a nine blades. Equal spacing around the center here. Here we go. Nine times. Looks like kinda, kinda, yeah, maybe. Obviously not as elegant, but we'll see. We'll see how it looks when it's printed out. But that is our finished fan for now. We'll see see what it looks like when it's a prints. Obviously, I don't want to print this whole deal. Now, I'm going to cut away everything except for basically I want to just print the hub out to make sure that fits over the fan motor the way we want it to. And then after that's secure, we'll do the rest. Save it. And then we'll also save an STL file. I'll print it out. We'll see if it fits up, make adjustments as need be. And then once we get it to fit good, we'll print out the whole fan and we'll compare it by eye to this. Oh, I forgot about these little triangles. I don't know what they do, but I want them. Okay, so now we got the uh, tri triangles on there. I, I mean, they're not, looks more convincing. I don't know. Either way, we're still gonna print just the core first. So back to where we were. But let's print this, see how it fits, and then uh, we'll try the whole thing. So the hub's printed out. Uh, little tight this is the initial one that we printed out didn't quite fit on the metal you know the fan hub reprinted it a little larger this one fit fit on there absolutely perfectly so after that we printed out a fan now this fan turned out decently i printed out of clear or transparent pla which has a interesting texture it's a bit brittle uh, even when you kind of look at all the blades though, you can see they all didn't quite print perfectly. They're basically this printed on a raft and some of the report support didn't, you know, come off very well. And where it did come off, where, you know, where it stuck too good, it kind of took some layers with it. So this was a good initial try. However, um, not satisfied. Needed to uh, reprint it to make sure it looked even better. And after the reprint, uh, in black, you see we have this. And this actually looks halfway decent. I, I got all the blades to be at the same height. They look very similar to uh, the actual fan. They got the little triangles came out there nice and pronounced. They're, I mean, for a $200 printer and uh, a few minutes in CAD, this is not actually too bad of a representation of the A12X25. Now, question is, how good or well does it perform? Does it perform somewhat similarly to uh, the actual one? Or uh, is it not even close? So I think the first thing we need to do is measure the RPM of each one of these fans. 
Actually, let's, let's weigh them. So these are um, same fan. They should weigh the same amount. Um, this actually, the, the real one feels a little heavier given it's legit material. But let's, let's weigh them and we'll see the difference between which one's heavier and which one's not. We'll know if this fan is spinning uh, more mass or less. So I gotta grab a scale, but I'll be right back. We'll go with grams. Um, so here's the stock one. So this is a stock, you know, A12X25 PWM. We'll see how much it weighs. Make sure it's all on there. 200.6 grams. A bit lighter, 187.3. So there it goes to show that the material that they used in the disc of this fan versus this one, the 3D printed PLA and I, don't even, I can't remember what it's called, whatever this plastic is they use, obviously more dense, weighs a little bit more than this one. Will that help us out? I don't know. We'll have to find out if because it's a lighter fan disc, does it spin faster? And to do that, we are going to measure the RPM. See, I already put two targets on each one of these hubs. So test two now. So we know that this fan is lighter. You know, the, the, the fan disc is lighter than this one. Uh, both of these are PWM. They have a max speed of 2000 RPMs, uh, plus or minus 10%. So they should be within, you know, within 10% of 2000 RPM. So we'll see if they one spin the same speed and if that one actually spins faster than this one, given it's lighter. Now, neither one of these are PWM controlled right now or just power to the fan, let them spin, you know, as fast as they would. The stock guy over here, 2000, it's pretty much dead, dead on, 2001, 2002 RPMs. The 3D printed version, it's slower. So 1796, 1788, and I think that is actually lower than the 10% it's allowed, let's see. So let's say it was 1788, that's 11%. So it's, I mean, it's close. It's close to being right in where the specification should be or say it should be. Could be that we got bad luck and just a slower motor than this one. And um, I'm guaranteeing you that that blade or that fan disc is out of balance compared to this one. But we're pretty close to being right where the specifications say we should be. And I do feel some air movement. But more importantly, let's check out the geometry of these two fans. Because the big thing we're trying to do here is just make them look the same. The hardest part of this one was getting the, the distance to the shroud. So the big, the big push or the big uh, benefit to this fan supposedly is that the clearance between the blade tip and the fan hub is like half a millimeter, which is basically with my printer almost impossible to hit. So what I had to do is I printed the fan hub or the fan disc slightly large. And then I took uh, some sandpaper put it in between the hub and then basically used my hand to rotate the fan to slowly shave the blade down to be, you know, as close to the hub as possible and still not hidden. And I think it, based on how good my printer is, we're as close as we can get. So the geometry is close. It's not perfect. Obviously it's never going to be unless Noctua sends me the mechanical drawings for these fans. But given a $200 printer and some time in CAD, I think we're pretty close RPM wise. This one is slower than this one. Weight wise, this one is lighter than this one. Now, noise. The big thing about this fan is how loud it is. So let's see if they are at the same decibel level, I guess you'd say. So this is how we're gonna make this work as best we can. I have downloaded a phone app DB meter. We're just gonna essentially set the fans at the same distance from the phone on the desk, plug them in, see where it goes. First, we're gonna get just record the ambient of the room. So. Let me be quiet, reset this, and we'll see how loud it is in here. So we'll call it 30.5. Fan one. Let it spool up here and then we'll reset it. All right, 35.5 is what we're pretty much sitting on at the end there for an average. So now we'll swap out. 42.4, so yeah, louder. So, so far we are spinning slower. Um, we are lighter if that's a win and we are making more noise. So that is a bummer. But anyway, uh, what else can we test? Uh, air movement. Let's try that. So to do this simple anemometer here, we're going to turn it on, face the fan away and just measure the air at, let's say a phone's length away. And we'll see basically how high or how much airflow we're getting. See which fan moves the most air. Now I will say this fan is spinning slower. 
uh, making more noise. So it's definitely more inefficient, at least in principle. It's not spinning as fast. Uh, Energy is being wasted in vibration. So this should push more air, but we'll, we'll see, I guess. 2.4 meters per second looks like what we're gonna be getting to on the 3D printed fan. 2.5, 2.5 meters per second. So we are moving a bit more air with this one to be expected from a, you know, a more refined fan, a faster spinning disc. But really, this one didn't finish too far off the mark for being, you know, off a $200 printer. Now, this is all fine and good. What we really care about is, does it cool stuff? So what we're gonna do is cool this radiator with one of these fans. This is a 240 AIO um, hooked up to a 7700K running at 4.9 gigahertz. Right now we're just running I to 64 stress test, no fans, just to get the loop all you know warmed up so we don't give advantage to either fan. But essentially we're gonna put a fan on there, run it for like 45 minutes, see where it levels off at, swap them out and see if this one performs in line with this guy. Now, based on what we've seen so far, I'm thinking that this fan's going to underperform when compared to this one, but to what level? So let's turn this off for a minute here. Fun fact, that is the graphics card that I baked in the oven. That's that 1080, still working. So that's pretty awesome. So let's shut this down now that we've got our loop warmed up, put this fan on there and we'll see you in 45 minutes. So I lied, it's been, actually I've ran both these fans. I started with the stock A12X25, then I moved to the 3D printed one. How did we do? Well, um, the stock fan had an average temperature of 80.3, a max temperature of 88 and a room temperature of 71.2. The 3D printed one did an average temperature of 81.6, a max of 89, and then a room temperature of 73.5. So I guess if you're looking at just the Delta, you could say it did better, but um, it's probably within the margin of error, so I wouldn't think too deeply into that one. And then essentially, when you, when you drill down into it, this is still a stock A12X25. Um, it makes a bit more noise now. It spins a bit slower, and it's not as balanced. But performance-wise, it's right in there with how one right out of the box does. And I think that's a lot, you know, I think, I think that says a lot to PLA. It shows that, you know, as we design and come up with fan ideas in the future, PLA is not gonna be the limiting factor. Um, the design is really what's gonna matter the most because this is printed out of PLA and it performed a little worse maybe, but that could be down to my design not being 100% accurate to the actual A12X25 because I don't have an actual drawing. But PLA as a material using a fan doesn't limit the performance and I think that knowing that we can move forward and make some goofy designs and try to make a fan that maybe performs better than this within that same frame with its motor. So on that bombshell, we'll see you next time.